So if we were to breathe in more deeply, would we more fully oxygenate the bloodstream? That is the question. What is up guys, today we're going to react to a video from Joe Miller, Joey Miller. Does deep breathing increase blood oxygen? A very interesting question, um, because we hear people say like, hey, I did this specific breathing method and it oxygenates my blood. Is this true? Is this, is this possible? So who is Joey Miller? He's a New York City yoga teacher and teacher trainer with a master's degree in applied physiology. Let's see what he has to say. You know, in yoga class, sometimes I hear teachers say things like that we only use a very small percentage of our lungs when we're breathing normally, that we don't use our full capacity. We want to know, of course, what is the full capacity of our lungs? And if you are breathing in normal daily resting situations, what capacity are we using? And that if we could use that full capacity, if we could breathe in more deeply, we would be able to bring more oxygen into the bloodstream. I've been commenting on previous videos where people were claiming this. And of course, I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't make a video about this. So is this true that through deep breathing, you can put more oxygen into your system? First, it is true that if we're breathing quietly, we don't use the full volume of our lungs. The total lung volume is usually said to be about six liters. So if we're breathing quietly, he is referring to what we call in freediving tidal breathing. So the total volume is more or less six liters, but we are not using those six liters on every respiration. So when you inhale, you're not inhaling six liters, you're inhaling less. That volume is called the tidal volume. And when we breathe in, breathing quietly, um, we don't use that full volume. We don't completely expand the lungs. Um, we breathe in about a half a liter, 500 milliliters per breath, half a liter per breath, that is tidal volume. So when you are breathing minimally, you are breathing in the slightest way possible. So small inhalation, small exhalation, and the volume of gas exchange happens during those in and exhalations. That is the gas exchange, the volume of that gas exchange is half a liter. So that means that there is a lot of extra volume um, that we could use. At the end of that tidal volume breath, we could fill up almost to the full capacity of the lungs. So we could inhale more than half a liter, more than tidal volume. We could do more than tidal breathing and that we would call deep breathing. So if you ever wonder what exactly is deep breathing, well, it is using your diaphragm in such a way that you're inhaling more than tidal breathing. So if we can inhale more, should we inhale more? That is the question here. Or should we just simply keep on tidal breathing? What is the best in resting normal daily life situation? There's also a little bit of air that's always left in the lungs, even at the end of the deepest exhalation. That's called the residual volume. So in freediving, we also talk about residual volume. So even after a full exhalation, there is still a bit of air in your lungs. So the idea of having empty lungs that simply doesn't exist. You cannot have empty lungs because there's always a little bit of air inside of the lungs even after a full exhalation and we call that the residual volume. So it might seem like, well, if I'm not using the full volume of, a, of my lungs, um, that doesn't seem like a good thing, but actually it is a good thing. So here it gets interesting. It is a good thing. Because what it means is you have extra capacity available to you when you need it. If you need more oxygen, you're exercising. I like the way this man explains the difference between tidal breathing and deep breathing. You have that extra space available. Um, so that means that we have uh, adaptability in, uh, in our breathing mechanism. That's a good thing. In all honesty, in uh, many years in freediving community, I have never heard anyone explain it this way. I was quite astonished to find this video. I don't know uh, this guy, uh, Joey Miller. He explains it in the best possible way ever. Okay, so if we were to breathe in more deeply, would we more fully oxygenate the bloodstream? That is the question. Um, the answer to that is, if you're healthy, probably not in any, any meaningful way. Probably not because we already have an oxygen saturation of 95 to 99%. Your blood is almost fully saturated with oxygen as it passes through the lungs, even in a quiet, relaxed tidal volume breath. Even in a quiet, relaxed tidal volume breath. So what he's basically saying here is, it doesn't matter how you breathe. It really doesn't matter. You always have fully oxygenated blood. Oxygen saturation refers to the amount of oxygen that's um, being carried by the hemoglobin in your red blood cells. The hemoglobin is a red protein in the red blood cells that has the capacity of grabbing, taking, 
the oxygen and transporting it through your system. And hemoglobin has a very, very strong affinity for oxygen. Loves oxygen. I cannot explain this in any way better than Joey does. So when the blood is passing through the tiny capillaries that wrap around the tiny little air sacs called alveoli in your lungs, where the gas exchange takes place. I give this man an absolute A for, for what he's doing here. Um, the blood becomes pretty much fully saturated in that very short period of time that is passing uh, around the alveoli. I have made commentary videos on uh, other channels that talked about the same and I was pretty hard on them because they were talking absolute bullshit. But when it's good, when someone explains something the way it actually is, you have to applaud this guy. Normal blood saturation is considered to be between 95 and 100%. If you have lung disease or cardiovascular disease, uh, that may not be true. Likewise, if you were to go to a higher altitude, your blood saturation uh, might be lower than normal. Watch my video, me commenting on David Blaine, the David Blaine breathing technique when he goes up in high altitudes on an airplane. Generally speaking, if you're healthy, um, even in quiet breathing, tidal volume breathing, your blood is fully saturated. Okay, so we understand that, we got it. So why should we do deep breathing if it doesn't increase the oxygen in our blood, or at least not in a meaningful way? Of course, in yoga, we do some pranayama practices, breathing practices where we expand the lungs more fully. We also slow the breathing down when we're doing that. Exactly. But the reason why we do those practices is not about oxygenating the blood more. It's actually about influencing the autonomic nervous system. Here it becomes super interesting. We're gonna talk about the autonomic nervous system. By slowing the breath down, we can shift the balance on the autonomic nervous system towards the parasympathetic division. So basically deep breathing makes you relax. So most people, they spend their whole lives in the uh, fight or flight modus. They never give their body and mind the time to relax. And when you relax, then you um, give space to your body and mind to recover. So that's what he's talking about, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Para comes from the Latin word parar, it means stop. So the parasympathetic nervous system is a nervous system that stops you from being agitated. That is the situation you have to be in to recover, to let your body and your mind recover and grow. That's what you do when you sleep. Slow deep breathing can be a way of helping us de-stress, to move away from a more sympathetic response, a fight or flight response. Sympathetic response is stress. To a more relaxed state in the nervous system. Parasympathetic response is rest and digest. So when you're stressed, deep breathing can help you go towards the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. That's really the benefit of um, those deeper, slower breathing practices in yoga. Exactly. So is it wrong to do deep breathing as a practice for freediving? Of course it's not wrong. How could it be wrong? I mean, this has been thought in yoga for, for since, since the existence of yoga. So how can it be wrong? Just don't use deep breathing immediately before your dive as a breathe up. Do not use deep breathing, let's say the last five or 10 minutes before you're going to dive or before your breath holding because then that could be classified as uh, hyperventilation. So we use deep breathing as pranayamas, as exercises to become more aware of breathing and to um, understand breathing and to give ourselves the opportunity to go from the sympathetic nervous system towards the parasympathetic nervous system to find peace. So yes, you can do that. Like, let's say until half an hour before your dive or until 20 minutes before your dive. But right before your dive, the breathe up, that should be tidal breathing. Guys, did you know I'm running live streams now for the members only? If you want to be part of that, then please go to join.gertleroy.com. And if you want to know five reasons why not to hyperventilate, then please check out this video here. That is it, guys. Peace in every breath.